What is up internet? I'm the nice one and today I got another character texturing video for you. This time we're gonna finish that D&D dwarf model that we started a few weeks ago. So sit back, relax, and let me make the mistakes for you. So I'm so sorry I'm coming late to you guys with this video. Last week got crazy was a bunch of side projects that I've been working on, but I've been able to carve out some time so that I can focus on putting out more YouTube videos. Someone actually dropped an interesting comment on the D&D Dwarf model. They're asking for a more step-by-step -step character modeling process, and I think that's a really great suggestion. So next week, you guys can expect a step-by-step -step character modeling video, where it's gonna be long form, no more time lapse, and I'll literally go from step A to step Z in how you make a very simple character model. So keep an eye out for that. I'll go through which shortcuts I'm using, which panels I often go to, and what modifiers I use to make my time a lot simpler and a lot more efficient. And I hope you guys find that a lot more useful. But this time, we're going to finish off that D&D model by texturing it a bit, so that it has more life to it. My basic process whenever I'm texturing a character is to first have the 3D model done, unwrap the 3D model to create UV maps of each body part, and then once I have the maps, bring it to Photoshop, or you can even texture paint in Blender to give it color, texture, and a little more depth to it and shading. So that's kind of what you've been watching me do here. I've been marking seams along the major body joints of my character, and then unwrapping it using Control u Smart UV Unwrap, making sure that there's a little bit of gutter space between each UV map. In case you don't already know, UV maps are 2D flat projections of your 3D model so that you can stick an image on that UV map and then your computer knows where that image will go on the 3D shape. Once you have the 2D UV projections, what I like to do, and it gives a little more detail, is to create something called ambient occlusion maps. Basically, ambient occlusion maps will bake in the ambient lighting shading that you currently have in your scene. That way, when you render, it will reduce your render time because it doesn't have to generate the shading based on your lighting. You already have it baked into the model. Save both the UV texture and the ambient occlusion image as a separate, two separate image files in your folders, and then bring those two images into Photoshop. Now in Photoshop, I did things a little bit differently. Instead of trying to do the hand-painted texture feel, I got some free high-resolution metal image textures from Google and brought those into my Photoshop file, changing the overlay settings. Basically what I did was I took the image textures and projected it over the UV map to give it that metal look without actually having to paint it myself. Basically, it's the lazy person's way of doing it, and I think it's a lot more efficient, especially if it, you're going for that realistic look anyways. Now, I will say that I did go in and add a few more painted details, like some multiply brush to give it that shading and some screen brush to highlight some of the edges of the metal, but that's just an extra step you can take if you want to really push your image texture to the next level. Save out that PSD as a texture into your folder structure, and then go back into Blender and create what we call a material for those characters. Materials are what your cycles renderer uses to determine what images are being projected onto your 3D model. So if you like using cycles renderer, make sure that your 3D models always have a material associated with it. Otherwise, when you render, it's just gonna come off as a black shape. To do that, open a nodes panel in one of your viewports. If you haven't made a material yet, select the model that you wanna make a material for, and then hit the Use Nodes button at the bottom panel. When you do that, two nodes should generate. One is a default output and one is a simple diffuse shader. What I like to do is hit Shift A to generate a new shader and then hit Texture when in that selection box and click Image Texture. Now you should have created a new node and in that node, select the PSD texture that we made earlier using the AO and UV maps. Use the pick width tool to connect it to the diffuse shader. And now you should be able to see that the image texture that you had created in Photoshop should be associated with the 3D model that you created in Blender. But once you have the material set up and all the textures associated to the right piece of your model, you pretty much finished texturing your character. So to recap, what I like to do, create a UV map, by unwrapping your model, create an ambient occlusion map to bake in some nice shading, bring the two maps into Photoshop and apply some image and com color texture to it to give it the depth, save that as a separate PSD, go back into Blender, assign nodes to each of your piece of your model, and then assign the PSD image texture that you created with the AO and UV maps to those nodes so that your full model now has a material that can be rendered out in an output. I hope you found that video useful. 
Next week, I'm gonna do what you guys are asking for and create that step-by-step -step character modeling video going from step one all the way to the end. So stick around for that. Anyways guys, this video is getting kind of long so I hope you found it useful. Drop a like if you like what you saw, comment if you have any questions about what I did, or if you have any feedback on how I can make things better for you. Stick around for the step-by-step -step walkthrough video, but until then guys, I hope you liked the video, I'll talk to you later. Have a nice night.